I'm Sarah Ballard with South Carolina Women in Leadership. Thank you so much for joining us for Create Positive Change in Your Community and taking that first step on your leadership journey. Um, so I am, without further ado, um, just want to welcome you on behalf of South Carolina Women in Leadership, and I'm going to turn it over to Vashti Rutledge. She's going to be our facilitator. She is a fellow with All In Together, um, and she's going to take us through the presentation today, and then we are going to leave about 10 minutes. We, if we have a little extra time, it may be 15, um, but we have three panelists today um, that are going to be joining, staying with us until the end. Um, you'll be able to choose your breakout session, um, and there'll be instructions on how to do that. It's pretty simple. You'll, a little pop-up will come up on your screen, um, but, but we will leave time for a Q&A. Um, so just as you're going throughout the session, think about the panelists and who may be someone that you feel like is a good fit with where you are, or where, what you're interested in doing in terms of civic engagement. Um, and then you can ask questions of them um, and they're gonna talk about their leadership journeys, why did they get motivated, what some of their challenges are um, in the last few minutes of the presentation. So without further ado, welcome again on behalf of South Carolina Women in Leadership, Boshtai, take it away. Thank you, Sarah. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for taking time out of your day to join us um, on this conversation. So um, Sarah uh, introduced herself and, and I'm Vashti, I'm from All In Together. And so All In Together is a national organization that works with voting age women all across the country in a nonpartisan manner in order to help women build their potential and their, cap their capacity as leaders in their community. And so whether that is at the neighborhood level all the way up to the national level, we are, the mission is to see more women engaged across the country. And so what a great opportunity to partner with the South Carolina Women in Leadership because of their multipartisan work with women in South Carolina. So today we hope that together we can encourage some of you who are either early in your journey or even some of you who are already active participants in your community to give you some tools and resources on how to take your engagement to the next level. If you want to find us on social media, which is uh, often the way we find each other these, way, these days, particularly um, given the current uh, pandemic, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, as well as emails for both organizations are, are listed here. And just a note, you will be getting the slides from this session after the fact. So you don't have to scribble all this information down really quickly. You can just take a look at the slide deck when you get it uh, tomorrow. So one of the things that All In Together does in order to support um, leaders across the country is they developed a community leadership program. And actually two, there were four fellows in 2020. I was gonna say this year, but I forgot we're at the end of January, I gotta stop saying that. <laughs> um, so in 2020, there were four fellows from across the country and two of those were previously members of the community le leadership program. And that program is really how All In Together has connected with women all across the country to help close the, the gender gap. Uh, in civic engagement for women in, the, in their communities all across the country. This is just a little bit about me. I'm not gonna spend too much time here. Uh, just know that, you know, for me, even thinking about what a civic engagement look like, I'm someone who's worked in philanthropy as a grant maker, um, supporting programs in their capacity, but it also helped me find kind of like my own personal mission and the things that I was passionate about. And so that's really the opportunity that All In Together was able to help me connect is how do I take the things that I do in my nine to five, connect them with the things that I'm passionate about and figure out a way to advocate and push for the thing, the change that I wanna see in my own community. So while we're all together, they're just a set of things that we would like to establish as uh, kind of like the ground rules of the game, right? So here's the community and greet agreements that we're asking everyone to take note of. And one, be present. We, I know everyone has busy days. Um, some of you have kids who are probably on a tablet or a laptop at school right now. So be as present as you can, right? Um, 
cookies. It's lunchtime for some folks. So somebody might need some more apple juice. You do what you have to do, but we would love to have as much as your time as possible. Respect the mic. So I'm gonna be doing a lot of the talking, but when there's opportunities for questions, please feel free to drop notes in the chat if you can. Um, or if you have a question, I think if you can use the hand raise tool. So we have a lot of questions that way uh, the moderators can maybe call on folks if there's, if there's a lot of questions. Um, be, this is an opportunity for to be brave in the space. So if you have a question, you're like, oh, I don't know if this is a great question that, you know, as you will often hear people say, there are no dumb questions, right? Because the question that you are brave enough to ask, someone else is potentially thinking about and not ready to ask. So feel free to ask your questions, stand up, take a deep breath when you need to, push away from the table if you've been sitting for too long, definitely be curious. Um, you know, we're coming from different positions, potentially politically and socially. So people will have different perspectives. So be open and respectful. I don't know everything for sure. No one does. So together we will figure out as much as we can. And if there's something that someone doesn't know, then we'll try and get back to you a response. And as you heard right at the beginning, the session is being recorded. Uh, so that's another opportunity. If you have folks that you are connected to who may want to watch this later, they uh, will be able to access it that way. So what are we doing today? So we just kind of got through the, the welcome and the intro, you know what organizations are here together. Uh, and we're gonna talk a little bit about a, a look back at what happened last year and what's coming. What is civic engagement? How do we redefine it? What does it look like for you and your community? How do you figure out what matters to you? How do you turn that engagement into leadership? And then give you some tools to help you decide how you want to engage and what you want to engage on. So why did we come here together? So one of the things to do is to help you all along on your process. So what made you, and everyone can maybe, if you have a pen handy or just to keep this in, in the top of your mind, just think about why you decided to join this particular workshop today. Or if there is a particular, you know, motivating, idea of something you want to push forward, you know, write that down. What are some of the personal or community challenges that you would like to see addressed in your community? There could be a lot of them, but maybe just think about maybe the top one or two things that are really um, top of mind for you about what's happening in your either your personal life, your family, your community, even nationally. And then if you can write down is three goals, but even if you just have, even if you're, you have one goal, which is just to learn, right? That's great too. You don't have to have three concrete goals, but really just thinking about, this is a way to help you engage and be present is to make sure that if the content is there and we're here together dialoguing that we help you reach the goals of, of this workshop. And if we're not getting you what you need, how can we help you, right? So there's an opportunity maybe to connect. Here's a question I might have. Um, because we didn't get a chance to talk about it or something for follow-up in the future. Sorry guys, we got, I got stuck. Hold on, give me one sec. There we go. So 2020, she's <laughs> right. We've had, we've had a year unlike any other. Um, if you take out the political aspect of the year, it still would be a year unlike any that most people alive today have seen, right? There, we have a, a few folks out there who were around, right, in 1918, but, but for the most of us, you know, the, the idea around a pandemic having this type of impact on our communities, right? Cities all across the country, across the world going into lockdowns, and at the same time, in many ways, a lot of us still needing to perform and, pre and present ourselves in a completely new way, but be engaged in our work, right? How to figure out how to balance our home lives, our, how we wanna engage in community, whether it's with family or friends, pods, you know, it's like all these different things that we were trying to do in order to create some level of normalcy for ourselves in this really incredible moment. Oh, and by the way, for those of us here in the States, it was 
a presidential election season. And so regardless of what's happening with health and a pandemic, we know that that can take over kind of the nation's attention every four years, no matter what. But for this particular year, there was the extra pressure and need to have conversations about who would be the most appropriate leader in order to help us get to what we hope is a return to some level of normalcy. And, you know, as we all have seen, it, as we have a new administration, um, the Biden administration, Biden Harris administration that was elected through the November election and then inaugurated this January. But we also know that this country, which ha as has been the case for quite some time, is very closely um, divided, right? We're not a country where 75% of 80% of folks vote for one party and the other party loses, right? Because they only got to a quarter of the vote. We are talking about oftentimes here, 49.5 to 50.5, right? So there is, you know, when people talk about how divided we are, that divide is split, right, <laughs> fairly evenly amongst two sides. So even though um, there are some folks who are incredibly excited about the new administration, we know there are a lot of people who are disappointed and that that is, you know, out of the people who voted, we're talking about 140 to 150 million people's opinions that were taken into account, which is absolutely one of the best things that did happen is despite the pandemic, the number of Americans who turned out to vote, whether it was right by mail, right? So however many folks voted absentee, showing up to early voting, showing up on election day was an incredible show of civic engagement, right? Because that is one of the core steps we can take to be engaged in our community is casting our, our votes. And in many of our communities, the, the presidential election draws a lot more people in, but we know there were a lot of other issues on the ballots, right? So whether it was Senate races, House races, local Senate and House races, all of those things are things that impact us in our community, school board members. Also last year, we had a census. So hopefully everyone filled out their census. It was really easy and went really fast online. Um, or you had someone come knock on your door, the few folks who were doing door knocking uh, to get your census out. Why is the census so important? The census is so important is because how many representatives you get in the house is determined by how many people are in your community. And that information is based off of the census. So if there is a severe undercount in your community, you could potentially lose representation nationally, right? Funding, things around, you know, district, districting, all of those things are connected to who lives in your community. And having the, the content from the census is one of the ways in which, uh, we engage in a very in a way that only happens every 10 years. But if you didn't do your census this year, just make sure that you remember this moment <laughs> that it only takes a few minutes and you could do it online. And if you want to know more about the census and understand it more, actually one of the other fellows did a, a workshop on the census and you can find it online on the AIT social media page, uh, particularly the YouTube channel has it loaded there. We had incredible um, social change coming to the forefront of the national conversation this year. There were deaths that have been happening in this country um, that have predominantly impacted or disproportionately impacted uh, communities of color, but particularly the African-American community. And after a, a few of those um, George Floyd's and Breonna Taylor's to receive the most national attention this year, but there were pe people who took to the streets of their community asking for change as it relates to police reform all across this country and, and internationally, right? People marched internationally because there are people who are dealing with these same issues outside of the United States. And on top of all of that, we lost 
um, Ruth Justice, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who for a lot of people was kind of this bastion of hope um, on the Supreme Court, not only be because of her particular leanings of how she, um, how she judged different issues, but as a woman on the Supreme Court, right, that is still a place where we are underrepresented. So all of those things thrown together, toss a little pandemic on top of it. And <laughs> lo and behold, we had this really intense year. And so to come out of it on the other side and think, you know, do we take a deep breath or what's coming next? And so what's coming next is we have a new administration uh, and the, they have a different approach, right? But right now they're still in their first week. So we can't, you know, talk to their success or failure, but what responsibility do they have to us as the citizens of this country? Um, what are their priorities going to be? And I'm sure um, for those of you who are following the news, we'll see that President Biden has been signing a host of um, executive orders. The one yesterday that took up the, the, the bulk of the news was around racial equity, but there have been ones, right, as far as the getting more people vaccinated, uh, talking about the minimum wage for federal employees, but there are so many, we know, right, we know we're going to have a new set of issues that this administration is focusing on, but there are also issues that might get pushed back or things that are particularly important in your community and how are you going to be able to engage with the folks who have the ability to impact what becomes a priority is what we want to discuss further here in this time where we're all most of us are in our homes right some of us who some of you may be a central employee some of you may have gone back to the office but are still having to social distance wear a mask and it is easy to feel isolated but even in our little separate kind of stations us in the you know talking over zoom today we are still a part of a larger community right so my neighbors, we wave, we don't spend as much time, you know, talking in the front yard as we used to. Also, it's very cold here right now. Um, but we're still, right, we're still neighbors, right? If I was going out of town, I would probably still knock on my neighbor's door and just be like, hey, we're going to be gone for a couple days, right? Because I know that they will look out for me, um, you know, or she might grab the mail for us, right? So, and, and vice versa. So, we still have ways that we can connect with each other, even if it's not face to face. You know, we had, um, my sister got COVID. My sister's a nurse and she got COVID and she found out the day before Thanksgiving. And she's in my pod, which has like all of like four people in it. And so that was the only person in my mom that I was gonna see. So we were like, well, there goes the end of that. So what do we do? Well, she did nothing because <laughs> she had COVID, but my mom and I still cooked and we swapped food, pre-packed containers, and they were on the porch and I got half of hers and she got half of mine. And then she took another batch and put it on my sister's. So no, were we all together? No, but do we still get to have a great meal, right? Do we still get to see each other virtually and are right? And, and we know that now my sister's much better and the rest of us were able to stay safe. So if you figure out ways to adjust, adapt, and manage the issues and still be in community with the ones that you care about, it's not easy. It's not always as easy as that particular right scenario, but there are ways that we can do this together. So this is why we are all in for 2021 because we are a community and I wanna turn it over to Sarah quickly to talk a little bit more about how this relates specifically to the, you all in South Carolina. Yeah, thank you. So you already mentioned, um, Boshtai, that, you know, obviously there's this massive movement for social justice that swept our country in the last year or so. Um, and our mission has always been to get women at all levels more involved in leadership, but we feel like it's even more important this year. Um, and we have a really big focus on making sure that there are um, diverse and inclusive perspectives as people step up to lead. Um, we think that, you know, we can have nothing but better 
representation if we have more perspectives represented. Um, and so we are focused this year on building racial and gender representation, representation and increasing the collective influence of women um, from the ground up. And, and by that, we mean that everybody has to start somewhere. Um, you're not going to start by running for, you know, the U.S. Senate. Um, there are lots of little leadership opportunities. I think even things that people don't necessarily think of as leadership opportunities um, that we're going to talk about today, just stepping up in the community and becoming engaged is really being a leader. If you see something that you think needs to be changed, don't sit back and wait for someone else to change it. Um, and so we want to bring women from all walks of life to the table. And we're doing that by trying to increase confidence um, so that women understand that they have to start somewhere and sharing the kind of leadership journeys that we're going to talk about in our breakout sessions today, talking to other women who have been on that same path um, and, and figure out what, when, how, what were the barriers that they faced, what were the barriers that they thought they were going to face that didn't actually turn out to be an issue. Um, we hear a lot of times that, you know, women think through things a lot more um, than men do. Men are just like, I can do it. Women are like, I need the answer to 700 questions before I feel comfortable. Um, and a lot of times the, the things that we think are issues or are gonna be barriers are, are not really. Um, helping build networks in these kind of meetings, um, but also through our circles of women, um, which will now that you are all connected to us by registering, We'll be getting more information about our circles of women um, and we're going to connect women in geographic areas throughout South Carolina. Um, as Vasha mentioned also with her story with Thanksgiving, we recognize that we can't all get together just yet in person. And so we're trying to find creative ways for women to network and um, both in their careers and geographically um, to get together and support each other. Um, and then also these kind of workshops to help you get the skills that you need so that you can feel comfortable and be well equipped when you do decide to step into those leadership roles. Thank you, Sarah. And I think that that is so in alignment with what AIT um, hopes to see happen in 2021 and beyond as well. So this is a perfect, a perfect moment to come together. If there have been surveys taken, um, and if you haven't heard it once, you've heard it maybe a hundred times, that today people feel like our political divisions have gotten worse. And I actually heard a, a senator, um, it was actually, it was Marco Rubio, Senator Rubio, who said, yeah, I heard him say recently, you know, Americans hate each other um, because of their politics. And while that is on the extreme, it does exist right now that people have gotten to a point where there used to be a time where I think people thought more of the like, oh, I'm more liberal, I'm more conservative. And then you voted a certain way in order to meet those, meet who met those needs. Now it has become much more a people see it more as a reflection of not just your politics, but your character and kind of like who you are has in for some folks has become fully wrapped up, right? In what your politics are. And, and, um, and people are trying to reckon with that and understand, you know, that someone just wrote a, uh, um, an opt in. I can't remember where it was. If I find it, I'll, I'll have it shared. But she was talking about her experience marrying into a family as, you know, the, the daughter of immigrants and marrying into a family that was from kind of like Midwestern America. I think they're from like Illinois or, or Wisconsin and split, but like a lot of the families had been Trump supporters and she was having this like tug of war of like, they were so welcoming and open into me. But at the same time, like now there's, we've kind of devolved, dissolved into this like back and forth around like, who's a snowflake and, and who's this and who's that based off of how the politics have impacted their relationships this year, particularly when they haven't been able to spend time together, right? Because they've been doing all of this over Zoom and WhatsApp and group chats, and it really has changed the dynamics of their relationships. And I think many of us are dealing with that this year. Um, so we were, it was absolutely fantastic, as I mentioned before, how many people got out to vote this year. But what we've seen is that people are getting out to vote, but then they're not really getting involved in the other aspects of being involved politically. 
Um, so whether that is, you know, did you contribute to a campaign? For a lot of folks this year, this that was particularly challenging, right? A lot of folks were laid off, um, lost their jobs, companies closed. But so, but did folks, you know, only less than ten percent of folks are volunteering, are really kind of, you know, put door knocking, which was didn't also another thing that would happen less frequently this year. But just that's not how people are kind of taking that next step, and so. Part of that is they don't know how, they're like, oh, how should I get engaged? I don't know what to do first. Or, you know, I don't know if I'm passionate enough or know enough myself to want to go, right, campaign for this person. So um, this is just a little, a little Q&A. So eight women who are 18 to 29 years old are less likely to engage civically or politically than their male peers. Why does everyone think that is? Let's see if I, I don't know if I, I might not be able to see, so we might have to, I'm gonna give you the answer in case, if anyone raised their hand, I couldn't quite see, I didn't see you. So, um, but it's very similar to what what Sarah was talking about. Women feel they require more practical information before they get involved. This same thing is not just about politics because it also comes up very often in jobs, right? That women will look at the requirements for a position and if they don't meet all of them, they are more hesitant to apply, right? Um, raises, uh, women are less likely to ask for um, or for, a higher amount, right, than our negotiating for salary tends to negatively impact us. And so it's one of those ideas of like the, our male counterparts have kind of, for a host of reasons that we don't have time for today, right, but have this sense of like, oh, I got a couple of the qualifications, I'm going to go for it, you know, oh, I bet the range for this job is you know, 75 to 90. So I'm going to ask for 110. And we're like, oh, it's 75 to 90. I should probably ask for 82.5, right? And so it's like, how, how do we get ourselves to that point of believing that you are good enough right now and you don't have to have all the answers in this moment in order to be effective? Your voice matters because you can have an impact on your community. As soon as you decide to commit to being involved, you, the, what can happen out of that is actually fairly incredible. You never know um, how you jumping in, adding your time, your story, your commitment to changing things in your community can have an impact on your community. Even if it's from a person to person relationship, the impact you can have on another, on another person, or it could be something that could change your neighborhood or your community, your school, your, you know. So when you all think about civic engagement, you know, civics, civic engagement, civic education, civic leadership, the word civic in itself, what, you know, what does that, what does that mean to you? Um, and do you think it's something that's important to your everyday life? Is this something you think about very rarely? Is this something that you think about only around election time? And do you think of civic engagement as running for office, right? Do you think, oh, I don't want to be mayor. So, you know, how does this connect to me? Or, um, I don't have a lot of money and it looks like in order to be involved in politics, you have to be a millionaire, right? There, there's nationally, when you think of politics, there's not, not a lot of national politicians who are not in some way, right, being supported by millions of dollars, whether it's their own or millions of dollars that have been pushed to support them. And so is the, has that impacted the way you think about civic engagement and what's possible for you to be, to be involved. So I'm not gonna read you all the definitions, but I, I think the, the piece that I think is really important is that civic engagement is about all of us, right? It's about all of us as, as community members, as citizens of this country, understanding how we can be a part of the process, right? And so the, the education component, how do we learn how the system works, 
right? Whatever that system is, whether it's our national political system, whether it is the rules that govern how you can go show up at city hall to speak to your city council members. Um, what skills do you need to do that? You don't have to have a PhD, right? To go to city council and tell them what's happening in your neighborhood. Your, your lived experience is expertise within itself. So your civic knowledge is based off of your day-to-day -day living. And that is information that is worthwhile above and beyond you know, the white paper that might show up because somebody commissioned a report. Now, those things are important too. That, you know, if you, the, the urban planning that goes into figuring out, you know, where the new park is going to go and, you know, what is happening in different neighborhoods around the country, that is important. But one of the things that we know, particularly in neighborhoods all across the country that are changing very rapidly as folks have moved out of the suburbs and moved back into the urban core of cities and folks, other folks who have been living in those cities, particularly folks of color have been pushed out again, is what is the new neighborhood? Who is it for? What does it look like? And how do we create spaces and places that allow for everyone to be welcome and they can actually afford to live there, right? But that doesn't happen unless people in the community push for it because, right, developers are gonna develop every plot of land they can get their hands on and they're going to put as many you know multi hundred thousand dollar condos in those spaces as they can unless the members of the community say wait a minute right where's the housing for the folks who work down here in our restaurants and where are where's the housing you know for the people who've lived here for the last 45 years right but those things have to be lifted up by the community themselves because we can't assume that other folks are gonna necessarily take our issues and embrace them in a way that advocates for us in the best way. And so really that is the opportunity for civic engagement. It could be as, as small as writing a letter or standing up at a meeting and as, as big as running for office. So that, and I think part of that is why we were talking about redefining it, right? Is how do we change the way you feel and see um, what civic engagement is? Thinking about, you know, the the brief video um, and what what the what the presentation so far has kind of brought up for you, kind of what are what are you starting to think about when you think about civic engagement, right? Um, this idea around making a difference in your own community is something that I think comes up for me, um, no matter what, you know, what level of community we're talking about. It could be, and the idea around, right, how do you bring, ish, bring awareness to an issue that matters to you? It could be your church community, right? I think that's a way that a lot of people first get involved. Um, over the last year, a lot of churches have been the point of contact for folks in the community for food, right? Access for folks who have needed access to food. Um, and the organization I work for, we would often leverage those connections as a way to get um, mask and hand sanitizer and information about how to keep yourself safe during COVID to people in the community who we might not be able to reach through social media because you who are the where are the places in community where folks are connected how do you get to folks who typically you know you may not reach through the methods that have become more traditional today and that is a way of being civically engaged even if you're you know if your congregation is a hundred people, or if it's you go to a mega church with twenty thousand, you're still having an impact on your on your community. So I, I don't want to knock you guys over the head with this, but right, we've been just getting it, but we want I want you to definitely take it away. The civic engagement comes at so many different levels, and it is however it makes sense to you. So you're really concerned about things that are happening in at the neighborhood level and you want to understand who's making the decisions or how or why 
you know, go see if your neighborhood has a website and then see when the community council is meeting, if that's something that your community has. I know right now a lot of them are happening virtually. So you may be able to pop in on Zoom, right? You can kind of keep, you can have your video off and just be listening in just to get a sense for how the conversations are going. Are you, particularly right now, if you have a, are a parent of children who are still in school and they're in school, they're not in school, they're blended. You know, our school district has taken parents through the ringer and they are trying to make the best decision for students, for teachers, but it has been a really messy year for everyone. Um, you know, our kids having their needs met educationally, how do we keep them safe? How do we keep teachers safe? Who's making this decision and what impact is being received from the community? You know, start showing up to school board meetings. I don't have any time. I, have, I don't have time for another meeting. You're like, I don't have another second left in the day. I'm exhausted. That is very valid too, <laughs> um, particularly right now. So if you're like, I want to be involved, I just don't have the time to commit to of doing a meeting every week or every month, or I'm not so sure, you know, where I fit yet. But there's this, you know, person in my community who I trust and who I want to see be successful, I'm going to donate to their campaign, right? A lot of us have city council meetings, I mean, city council elections coming up, or county elections coming up in 2021 or 2022. That's a way for you to get involved, and you give at the level that makes sense to you. Volunteering, you can be, you can volunteer for a campaign, you can volunteer at your school, you can volunteer you know, maybe check out, you know, I really want to be a part of helping people get back outside, you know, see what your local parks are doing. There's just so many different ways for you to get involved that you can match to the things that kind of lift your spirit. So think about the things that you're passionate about, the things that bring you joy, right? And then how would you like to connect those things to the way that you invest in your community? Quick time check because we got. I we I want to make sure we have a good amount of time to have a conversation in the breakouts. But we, you know, we've been talking about this, and I think this this slide is a great way. If you're like, oh, she was saying so many things <laughs> about how I can't get involved and I can't remember it all, but I would love to, you know, think more about it. This is just a great list of ways that you can think about how you can be involved in your community and what you could do to get started. And, you know, as I was saying, thinking about what matters most to you. So what is the thing that you're most kind of in willing and wanting to be engaged in? Because that's the only way you're going to stay engaged, right? It has to be something that you are passionate about, that, that you want to see um, a change happen, or if you something that you want to see preserved for your community, that though, that's one of the best places to get involved. And it's gonna look different for everyone. Um, I love the idea of like, it should feel good when, right? When you are working to, on behalf of your community, it doesn't mean it's gonna be easy, but right? But at the end of the, at the end of the project, at the end of the campaign, win or lose, you should feel good about yourself, about what you were able to accomplish, the time that you gave. And even, you know, sometimes, the candidates that we love don't win, right? But the process that you went along is also part of the journey that is worth looking at positively. So as you're thinking about kind of getting back to the way where we started, if you're like, okay, I'm feeling like there's an opportunity for me this year. What am I gonna do? What do I get started? It can feel overwhelming, particularly if you're someone who is, has a lot of different passions, right? Or a lot of touch points in your community, right? You, you're a parent, you're, you're a business owner, um, you know, you are an active, you know, cyclist. So you want more bike lanes. You're like, well, how, I can't do all of those. Just start with one, right? Start one place. What's the, what's one thing that you're passionate about? What, you know, where do you have experience or expertise? So think about kind of maybe your nine to five or something, you know, maybe um, you're a writer, 
you know, even if it's not your profession, but it's something that you do, um, you know, maybe you maintain the newsletter for a civic club that you're a part of. You're like, okay, well, I'm really, you know, interested in our community having more bike lanes. And, you know, I'm a really great writer. I know how to, you know, get my ideas across well. What could I do to help our community make this decision? Hmm, maybe there's an opportunity for you to write an op-ed right? And have it published in the newspaper to get the community to talk more about it. There are so many ways that you can take the things that you're good at connected to the issue that you're passionate about, and then bring those together to get engaged in the community. The sense of urgency, I think um, there are going to be some things where just, we're like, I'm passionate about the bike lanes, and it would be great if we, but we're not going to have new ones by March. So I have to think about that as a long-term project, maybe for 2022 or 2023. But right now I am really concerned about the last semester of school for these kids. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the school board meeting because that's urgent right now. And you know, our school decided February 1st that the kids and teachers were going back to school for blended. And as soon as that decision, and our, at the same time, our county went into the purple which is um, our, for our color coded system is where you're like very high community spread. And it was the first time that we've been in the purple at least for the last six months. So we went on the purple and then the school board said back to school February once, February one. And a bunch of parents were like, no way. This isn't, this can't, this is not how it all makes sense. And someone started a petition on change.org, a small way, but I saw the petition, petition go out, Thousands of people signed on to it right away. I don't know what the end result is gonna be of that, but that person decided to take a step because they felt like the situation was urgent. So now you can think about, and I think, well, this is some homework. This is your homework, is what's your top kind of three issues? Which one do you think is the greatest priority? What's driving why you've prioritized them? and then start to outline how you may wanna get involved, um, either understanding the issue more, right? So how do you educate yourself about the issue? It could start with just a simple Google search, right? <laughs> and then who do you need to be able to connect with, work with in order to impact that? And what would be a barrier and some challenges to getting started, but what are also some opportunities? Because you don't just wanna focus on the barriers, you also wanna think about what are the opportunities? And I think that will be some really good homework um, for everyone. So it is 118 and I haven't gotten to leadership, but that's okay because the leadership will be built um, and you can talk more about, we can, I would love for everyone, you know, if you have a chance to take a look at the remaining slides around kind of what leadership means and looks like for, for all of us, but I do want to give you all a chance to get into the breakout session. So I apologize that we weren't able to get through all of the content, but I think it's really important for everyone to have an opportunity to dig deeper uh, and have some smaller conversations. So I'm going to pause here and turn it over to Sarah for the breakouts. Sure. And Basha, do we have a slide um, that has a sort of a screenshot of what the breakout sessions are going to look like? We um, so we have um, we have three different options for breakout sessions. In just a moment, I'll open those rooms up and you can choose which session you'd like to join. Um, we have Ashley Wimberly, who is a newly elected member of the Dorchester 2 School Board. We have Tanya Rodriguez Hodges, and she's with the Latino Communications Community Development Corporation. And Krista Williams is with the Rural SC Project. Um, and so we would love for you to pick one of those. They're going to share more about their specific leadership journey, um, what they chose, why they got engaged, why they chose the type of civic leadership that they're engaging in to, to affect change. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and open up those rooms. We'll give you about 10 minutes in there um, to ask your questions. Please feel free to unmute your mic. Um, it's definitely going to be a smaller group. So um, each of you will have a moderator in those rooms that can kind of help if you want to type your questions in the chat um, and, and we um, are going to go ahead and open those up and then we'll send you when we're ready to close the rooms, you'll get a notification um, and you'll need to come back to the main room and then maybe Vashti will have a few extra minutes 
Um, and if we want to go through some of the things, if you have a few extra minutes beyond the 1.30 time frame, um, we can probably run through some of those things then. But we wanted to make sure you had a chance to talk with the panelists and ask your questions because they really have started from the ground up on their leadership journeys. Um, we really appreciate all of our panelists. And um, Bashai, I want to turn it back to you and see if there's anything else that you'd like, the content that we didn't get to, if you want to spend just a couple more minutes um, looking at anything else in the slide deck. So I, I think we we didn't get to really talk about the, the leadership component, but I think this is what I will say, um, which is probably not a synopsis of the slides, but I think just from a, a larger standpoint of understanding kind of how to get to where you want to go. If your passion is leading you to a place where you feel like the best way for you to be involved is to be in a leadership role with civically, just remember that everyone has to take a starting point and that point doesn't have to be kind of the end goal. So yes, there's always someone who jumps into the first race is like, I'm just gonna run for mayor. Like we have some folks here who do that. <coughs> they don't tend to win, right? Um, you, know, er, you know, every once in a while there's a political phenomenon and you have a junior senator uh, from Illinois who ends up becoming president, but those moments are rare. <laughs> those are rare occurrences um, nationally and locally. You have to build relationships. You have to build trust in the community. You have to build the experience to understand how things work. Even if you want to change a system, you have to understand that system enough to understand what's wrong with it, right? How it's working, what's not working. And so I would say, if as you're thinking about what it is that you want to do and what are the tools that you need in order to accomplish that, I think one of the best things to do is to definitely set your goal. If you're like, I want to be the, I want to be on city council. I want to be mayor. I want to run for U.S. House of Representatives. Then write that down, but then start thinking about, but where do I need to start, right? What education do I need? What are the issues that are important to me and my community? How do I take my passion and turn that into something exceptional for our community? And once you do that, then the other pieces will start to fall together. The, the content in the slides around civic leadership are great because I think it breaks it down in a very kind of like here, here are types of leadership and ways that you can approach it. I personally who thinks of, who, who is, um, believes in servant leadership as I'm someone who's worked in nonprofits. So that is in alignment with kind of my own mission and values is to lead to be in the service of others, right? To lead in order for others to also be successful. But we all have different styles. We all have different ways in which we think about our leadership. And that opportunity is, is your journey to kind of go on. And so I will stop there because I wanna be respectful of all of your time and appreciate you all for staying these extra few minutes. I hope that you found um, this content helpful. I know it was a lot of information. And so please, you know, take some time with the slides after the fact, and then have, um, you have contact information for both AIT and for um, SC um, Women in Leadership and reach out, reach out with questions if you have them. And so I'll stop there and say thank you very much for, for taking time with me this afternoon. And I hope that uh, this has been a worthwhile experience for you and turn it over to Sarah. Yeah, sure. Well, thank you so much for, for helping facilitate today. Um, and I just want to reiterate to everyone, I know that we had sort of some unanswered questions at the end of the breakout session. Um, we will provide the slide deck um, and also contact information for all of the panelists. Um, so if you do have a specific question, you'll be able to address that to them directly. Um, and there'll be some other information. Also, um, as she mentioned, you know, this is kind of the first step. Um, we're, we have a whole series of trainings 
um, in partnership with All In Together um, through this spring and, and on through the rest of this year. So we do have another session coming up on February 18th. Um, and that's about, you know, really figuring out. So now that you've thought about these preliminary questions, what's your leadership style and um, where, you know, where is the best fit for you in the community? Um, so information about that session will also be included in the post event email and um, obviously in the general event section of our website, of South Carolina Women in Leadership's website. So thank you all so much for joining us today. Thank you, Vashtai, for facilitating. Um, thank you all in together for this great partnership. We're really proud to be working together. Um, we feel like we have a lot of common goals and um, please do be in touch directly with us or with any of the presenters if you have any additional questions.